And as, as we're going to get started, so as most of you all probably saw that this is a meetup group, that this is known as the Small Business Owners Meetup. Uh, if you go to the meetup uh, website, this is this is you will see the exact same uh, picture as of right now, as of the recording of, of this uh, uh, of this video. We have I think 127 people that have enrolled in this uh, into this meetup, and which is not bad since we I just actually started this in February, and we not and yeah we have 127 people uh, in, in the meetup right now. Um, right now, we do also have three events coming up. We are in this one right now, which is SEO strategies using backlinks. There are supposed to be up to 24 people here on just on Meetup alone. Next week, we are going to have another training. In that case, that was going to be called uh, Building Your Business Credit. And then the week after that, uh, on July 25th, is going to be knowing your ideal client. That is, and, and James and I talked about this uh, briefly earlier today. It is like, who, who is your ideal client? And getting very specific as who that person is. And then uh, right now, we uh, tentatively, we have a workshop, a full, a full day workshop coming up uh, on August 5th. That is still tentative. Um, however, that one is called the Business Kickstarter Workshop, and that is going to be an all-day event. Uh, it's going to be an all-day event online. So I just I just started uh, um, just started to promote that one. Going back to our slide slide deck, the uh, so again, this is our this is our weekly training. We have we do this every uh, Tuesday at three o'clock to five o'clock Eastern, or twelve o'clock to two o'clock Pacific, depending on which time zone that you're in. And if you're in another country outside those four time zones, you'll have to adjust uh, for your time zone there. The meetup the meetup website is meetup.com forward slash small dash business dash owner. So I can I can go back to it and you can see that is our that is our URL uh, for our uh, for our um, uh, 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 training. Now, it, it, uh, let's go ahead and go into my website real quick. My company is called Optimal Performance Academy, and this is our URL. It's optimalperformanceacademy.org. Now, what we do a wide uh, a number of different things. I do also I do uh, a, a group coaching. This oh, excuse me, this is our training classes. So under uh, uh, under the training tab, we have workshops and webinars and master classes that are coming up. We also have what I call the curriculum. This is where our 15 uh, different courses that we currently have uh, available uh, for you. You will get access to a, a one of our free classes um, because you attended this call. You'll get a, that email in probably about two hours. Uh, we I do break the curriculum down into six different uh, uh, business tracks. One is called, excuse me, let me go this again. Uh, one is called... Ah, uh, one is called the Introduction into Business uh, Courses. We've got Essential Business Courses. That's going to be where most of our courses are, let, are at. If you're trying to create an online business, we're, we have courses for that as well. If you're looking at credit and finances, this is where our, our business credit course is going to be once we have it fully recorded. And some other courses are, are that are credit-based and finance-based are in this track. If you're looking to do more like WordPress and SEO, we have courses in there. And then if you're looking to become a trainer or public speaker, we have those courses. Or if you want to see all of our classes that we currently have, you can go to where it says all available classes. And I'll go and click on that just to give you a quick look as, uh, into that. And if you scroll down, you, will, we, you can see we have the six different tracks. We use these different colors here. And then uh, if you go down, like you will all be getting access to this course, the Roadmap for Business Success that will be given to you by the end of this call. Just click on the link and you will have it. Uh, and you'll see which tracks that we consider this, uh, these courses to be in. Um, back in 2017-18, I did have a, a podcast called Life's Little Lessons. I know I talked to James about this a little bit earlier today, where I interviewed 59 other entrepreneurs. That is, that is available. We have all, uh, all different other kinds of courses as well. Now, right now, we are in a what I call the Tuesday training. Um, and it's going. To, I talk about this. The Tuesday training. This is what. These are the general categories for for the training. If you come to the first Tuesday of the month, it's usually going to be some type of general business concepts. That's what we're going to be talking about. Uh, we did not have a training last week because July fourth was on a uh, was was on a Tuesday, so we didn't have one. To, uh, the second Tuesdays, we talk about WordPress and SEO. So as you can tell, this is an SEO uh, training. So we are on target with this. Next Tuesday, we're going to do software uh, and CRMs. This is where we're going to, in this case, co cover the, the business credit. And then the fourth Tuesday, social media, and we'll uh, talk about uh, some of that stuff as well. 
And then if there happens to be a fifth Tuesday of the month, this is where we will talk about a, a bonus a bonus information or, or possibly have a guest speakers. Now, uh, all of our uh, all of our stuff is on our calendar as well. You can go to our our website and go to where it says. Let's go to the top. Uh, go to where it says. Where's that? Uh, calendar of events. The calendar of events will uh, pull up all of our courses that we have uh, in the past and coming up in the future. And as you can see here, like right now, we're on we're on this event uh, right now. So that is our that is our calendar. Now the, the courses here are also recorded for a reason. In one of our uh, in part of our education that we do is that we have a training uh, where where we actually record these uh, th these events and we put into what I call the classroom. So all of our events um, uh, that we record on Tuesdays will, uh, will actually be available to you. This is a membership website, and you'll be able to see all uh, previous courses, re-see the courses you actually were in, and as well as uh, you know, as well as when future courses come up. The, the, this is a seventeen dollar a month of membership, and uh, and yeah, that way you can actually uh, catch all that information. Now under the classroom, we have what we call the previous events. Now, these are all of our previous recordings that we've done. So if we, if we scroll down a little bit, uh, two weeks ago, we had a class called Master, uh, Ma um, Mastering uh, Virtual Events with Multi-Platform Optimization. Essentially with that was how, because like this event here, most of y'all found us on Meetup, with the exception of James, he found me on LinkedIn, and then I told him about this. Um, so um, this is how do you create, a say, a, a, an event like what we are right now, and then have it on multiple different platforms. And we're testing out the whole Facebook Live aspect of things uh, at the moment as well. Other courses that we had was the introduction to using AI in your business. And you, and you scroll down and you'll see all the other courses that you have access to, or at least the cl these classrooms, these Tuesday trainings that you have uh, access to. Now, these first two or three, the landing pages and sales funnels, increasing website traffic with redirects and subdomains, and the introduction to SEO, which was our, ver our very first uh, meetup, these are all uh, these were all actually live. So the recordings were actually shot with a video uh, camcorder from the back of the room. So just so you so that you guys are aware, the the ones starting with understanding and navigating your client's journey and closing deals, that was our first virtual uh, event. Um, let me go back. Um, okay, we, already, we already talked about the curriculum. Now, for everybody that attends this call, you we, we will have you, you, you're all welcome to have a 30 minute discovery session. That's, this is where we will sit down and talk uh, through Zoom about you and your business. And then how could we actually possibly help you, um, you know, uh, uh, achieve some of your goals. So everybody that wants to uh, do that, you can always just go to the letsmeet.io optimal uh, forward slash uh, optimal forms academy forward slash discovery and that will give you direct access to my calendar so where you can actually um uh, join us or excuse me uh, schedule this call so th that way uh, you will you'll be able to see my calendar and, and schedule a time that uh, that best works uh, for you and then last but not least if you go to our website and go to the Optimal Forms Academy forward slash Tuesday, you will then also have access to, uh, you, you'll be uh, put onto a mailing list where you'll be notified uh, every Tuesday or uh, of, of the upcoming event. So you'll be notified on Monday as well as Tuesday. So you have uh, you have an idea when that's going to be a, a cap, uh, uh, occurring again. And that's for the workshop. We'll talk more about that later. Now, before we get started, um, anybody have any questions as far as their, uh, you know, about SEO, their knowledge of SEO, uh, or like to find out more about like where you are with your SEO uh, experience? Are, are, would you consider yourself very experienced, uh, any experience, or no, no experience at all? And you can leave that in the chat if you like. Just, just get, get your idea of where you are as far as SEO is concerned. I know Joe's got some experience because we were talking about that before the call. I want to make sure people know how to use the chat.
or you can just announce it out loud over the microphone. Okay, that was on. Oh. Okay, so Joe, yeah, he talked about having Drupal and, and WordPress and Mohammed. I'm a backlink expert and watching an opportunity to have anyone need uh, to off page SEO expert. Okay, so um, so Mohammed, if I do end up saying anything that is incorrect, uh, please let me know. Okay, so we've gotten two uh, two people that are fairly new. So I will I would try not to talk over your heads. And for those of you that have a, a, a bit of a, of experience, you will probably see some just some basic stuff here. Okay, so let's go ahead and continue on. Now, I went ahead and put up uh, this one here. This is a, a Wikipedia, which is the free encyclopedia. Now, the one thing about uh, Wikipedia is that basically anybody can actually leave information or do updates. So um, you, when you're looking at this, you want to be be very cautious as, 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 as if you, uh, for anything that you search on here. But right now, I'm going to basically talk about what is a backlink. I'm going to go and get rid of this slide so we don't need it right now. So a backlink essentially is uh, is is a link from a, some other person's website, which they are called the refer oh. to a web source, which is the reverend, yeah. which is going to be you. Yes. Yeah. I Somebody just, says something. I was just looking. I just left Ashton's doctor's appointment, and I'm I'm on a Zoom on my other phone. So I did, I, I, I text Kathy, I told her I did look at it, but I couldn't, I had to look at it on my phone because I was, when she had sent it, I was on the way to the appointment. Okay. Mm -hmm. But it looks, hold on, am I? Hello? Oh, I'm So is everybody good? Did you, uh, do, I, do I need to repeat anything tomorrow? Uh, no, I'm good. Okay. So essentially a backlink is something where it's on uh, another uh, person's website that's coming back to your website. And when Google uh, and other crawlers are out there crawling the, 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 the webs, they're going to be seeing these links. And the more links that you have coming back to you, to your website, the better your SEO is going to be. Now, this is not something that's going to be done overnight. It does take time. So for those of you, I don't think anybody knew me back when I was doing real estate, back when I was doing uh, real estate, back when I lived in Las Vegas, Nevada, and this is where I started really learning about SEO, was that uh, I used to shoot a lot of video of all of my uh, of all of my houses. And I had uh, several, over, over the course of a few years, I had several hundred houses. And I, I and for every video that I shot, I put on YouTube and I wanted and I made sure that that YouTube video was going back to my website. Now, my website was constantly being updated. So that was showing that my website had activity on it as well. So what, what happened was after the course of a couple of years, um, my specialty in real estate was known as lease options or rent to own. And essentially, if you typed in lease option Las Vegas, I was always on page one of Google. And to be completely honest with you, if I was not on at least on page one, four or five times, I was worried. So this is this basically back in 2009 and 2010 when I learned when I started really learning about the importance of having these uh, these uh, the third party websites referring back to you. So I just wanted to, to, to show that to you. Another uh, thing that I want to show, uh, show uh, go over real quick while we're on Wikipedia is something known as PageRank. So a page rank is an algorithm used by Google, uh, by Google search to uh, rank websites and uh, their search engine results. It is named uh, both after the term web page and co-founder Larry Page, which is that guy right there. Page rank is a way of measuring the importance of website pages. So according to Google, a page rank works by counting the number uh, and quality of links to a page. Now, this is the, the quality of links is one of the most important pieces here. Um, and that is determine a rough estimate of how important that your website is. So if you've got a website that uh, is not getting uh, the credible or quality links uh, go, going to your page, it's going to be a hard for people to find you online. So that's one of the reasons you really want to um, uh, actually partake in some of the things that I'm going to be sharing with you this, uh, this afternoon. So I'm going to go ahead and talk about, you know, what is a, uh, what are our credible websites? 
So I'm gonna open up this word file here, make it a big so everybody can see. So here's here's some examples of non-credible websites. It's going to be so basically anything that's a, a adult uh, theme, meaning like a, a porn or anything or anything that's that's like that. Any of those those are not going to be credible links. So you want to make sure that you have nothing on there in those areas. You also don't want any websites that are or be on anybody's websites that is poorly designed. And now this is where I could probably bring Joe back in because as being a um, as being a web designer, uh, a, a poorly designed website is is seen uh, unfavor unfavorably uh, by by Google. Now another one that you want to make sure that you look at is is you want to make sure that you uh, well, a not credible website would be one that's not updated on a regular basis. So you. So this is one of the reasons you definitely want a website that you're constantly doing updates on. Now, if you're if you're not if, if you're not creating new content, like say you like in my case, new programs or new ideas, one one way that you can actually have your website actually uh, being updated on a regular basis is to have a blog. So that that blog will because you you you're creating new links every time you create a blog. I will show you our blog as an example. If I go to our blog here. And you will see that we have uh, like uh, this is the blog here. This blog was written just a couple of days ago. It was uh, the power of joining a mastermind. So inside this blog here, uh, when I whenever I created this, and I, I'll go ahead and click on it, and you will see appear in the URL part of it. This I, I just create a new link. So when uh, the Google spiders are out there uh, crawling around, they say they crawl on my site every say let's say a couple of times a month. They will see that I'm constantly having new content, which shows that me to be irrelevant. If I did not have any content that was being updated, and there's been no update, say in a year or two years, do you see how Google, you know, just looking at it from the spider's uh, perspective, would see that your um, that, that your website is not active? That could mean that you're out of business. So in those cases, you will actually start ranking lower. So you definitely want to have a website where you are actually doing updates on a regular basis, um, especially if you want people to try to find you by if they're going onto a search engine and trying to Google you. Now, another uh, another way that makes your website uh, um, non-credible is having many broken links. So that's going to mean like you have a link on your website. And let's say if I go down here, because I always have two links in my blogs, if I have th this link right here and it, were, and it was, was a broken link, it went to a bad, uh, a, a bad place. This will also be seen as a uh, as a bad link. And this is also going to show you to be as, not as credible. And that's going to uh, directly affect your SEO. So you want to make sure that you are um, that your uh, that all your links are current are currently working. Now, uh, put in the chat a one if you've heard of this. How many people have heard of uh, uh, if they use the the, go, the, uh, the Google uh, Chrome browser that you've heard of something known as extensions? Uh, type a number one or a Y uh, to say that you've heard of Google extensions. And if you have not, put in a, uh, an N or a two. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, so it looks like most people are saying yes. I've got a couple of, we have one no. So I'm going to show you what a, a, a Google extension is. Now, uh, how the, the, the Chrome browser has actually been updated, but like we say, within the last month or so. So the, uh, the way you did it a month ago or two months ago may not be the way that you're doing it now. So to, to, to get a uh, extensions, you just go up here where the three dots are in the upper right-hand corner and click it. Now, it, this is where we, we're going to be going. It's going to be these things called extensions. In the past, extensions was inside of, of more tools, but they just moved it out within the last, I don't know, just the last few weeks. And what you want to do is you want to go to a manage extensions. So and, and extensions, uh, you, the, uh, I hope uh, next to where I put in the URL, you will see these little uh, these little characters up here, these little icons. These are different Google extensions. One Google ex extension that, that you may find useful is one that's called a, a check my links. So go ahead. If you don't have this, I would suggest you go ahead and go into where this searches extensions and and and, and type in that check my links. This should show up. It should probably be a gray, and, and you should be able to install it at this point in time. And what this is going to do is going to do a rudimentary 
um, a check on your website for any kind of links that may be broken. I will show you how that works. Uh, um, why, why you guys are downloading that. So let me go back to my home page. Get off, get off, get off of this blog. Go back to my home page. It was this little check mark here. That's the extension. And I'm going to go ahead and just click on that. And you'll see right now it's it's it's, it's uh, checking my website. Uh, uh, see, it's got 31 links, 32 links, and then I have what called redirects. I do do a lot of redirects. And right now it's already saying that I have one broken link. So at least this, so after this call is over, I'm going to be going out there and researching where that broken link is. Okay. Oh, it says I got two broken links now. So this is this is just a great a, a great tool that you can use fairly uh, fairly quickly to to check to see where, where your your bad links are. Now I'm going to scroll down and, say, and try to find that red box just on this one page. And so it appears it's not on this one page, and I'm going to have to go and, re and research it. And these are not clickable. So anyway, that that is one way that you can start checking your website for broken links, to, so that you so that you could keep try to keep yourself uh, compliant, so you don't have that many broken links and, and maintain your SEO. Now another thing that uh, that uh, the spiders are going to check for is uh, 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 poor grammar. Now, grammar is something that you definitely want to make sure you, that you're you're cautious with. Now, uh, there's there's two things that you can do to actually help check your grammar. I'm just going to refresh this and just so I can get rid of all this all that screen stuff. Um, th th there is another extension that you can use that's called Grammarly. So if I go back to the the extensions again, I can uh, go and check for Grammarly. And this one is an, is another free one that you can use. So the, what this is going to do is that any website, anything that you're doing online, it, it's going to be checking your grammar, just like if you're doing anything in Microsoft Word, that, that where, where that checks your grammar there. So you want to go, you want to make sure that that everything that you're typing is correct. So as an example, let's let's just um, let's go to a blog. Let, let me log into my uh, my, my back office. And, I, and I'm going to go ahead and go to a uh, and create a blog. Hey, Kevin, I have, a, I have a quick question, just real quick. Sure. So I'm following along, and I'm I'm I have the I got hit the drop down. I go to extensions, but my ex, like when I type in the extension, nothing comes up. Am I am I like missing? Is something that you don't have any? And uh, so, or or this could be one of two different things. Either number one, um, you're in a, a different Google account because I've got, I've got four or five different accounts, so that might be. Okay, Jason says on the bottom left, uh, choose the extension store. Okay, go with the extension store. Uh, okay, let me let me. Uh, so it's probably this one here, the visit Chrome. Okay. Because I already had them uh, downloaded. This um, that's that might. Okay. Okay. I think I got it. Okay. Thanks. Okay. No problem. And now when you turn on Grammarly, I think for me, when I first had it turned on, it was in uh, British English. So you want to make sure that you switch it over to uh, American English. Um, or you can change it to any language that you want, to, to, you know, depending if you speak a second language. But this is, the, so essentially what this is going to do is if I go ahead and say, I'm going to add a new blog post and I'm going to type something uh, in here in, in the, uh, in the body, it says, uh, uh, it's a, uh, Jack and Jill went up the, and I'm going to say here, but I'm going to I deliberately misspell it. So H-O-O-L, uh, Grammarly, uh, so that may be actually a word. Uh, Grammarly will usually underline this with, with a red underline. So th th therefore, you can catch your grammar as well as if it, it will give you suggestions of what you should, could change it to. Uh, it's just like my, I can see right now, the red underline just came in because uh, Grammarly is saying that that is misspelled. And uh, normally, uh, I could just highlight over at the top and it's going to give me the, the, the suggestions that, that they think I should help, uh, have. Or I, in, in this case, I can change that. I can just go back and change it. If the word is actually spelled correctly, like say maybe a, an unusual uh, person's name, uh, you can always add it to the dictionary as well. Or you might say, you know what, this is I'm, I'm just I'm, this is a word I'm using for this blog. I don't want to add it to the dictionary. I can dismiss it from this uh, from this setting. 
So these are these are things that can help you with your SEO on your website using free extensions that uh, that Chrome uses. Now I do believe that these also exist in uh, Microsoft. The, the, the other one, let me see here. Let's just pick Pat. Or does it? Because I don't have this as a default uh, in Microsoft Edge, you'll see the extensions are up there as well. So, so they they do uh, they they do uh, translate over. Now, since we're talking about a poor grammar, um, also a poor spelling. So uh, the Grammarly um, uh, uh, extension will help you with your spelling as well as you just saw. Um, It's also going to be looking at uh, how, uh, when, when was your website last updated? So that is going to be something else as well. Because if you're if you're not doing as we already mentioned, if you're not doing constant updates, then your your website will be seen as something that's going to be kind of stale. And one of the other ones I I, I uh, just recently learned is don't is do not use Wikipedia as your um, uh, as a link going up uh, leaving your website. This is known as an outbound out, outbound link. The reason being is Wikipedia, even though it, a lot of people use it, it is not the most credible because anybody can actually make a change or suggest a change to Wikipedia. So in those particular cases, one of the best things that you may want to use is something known as is something known as Miriam.webster.com. This is a, a diction. This is the actual uh, Webster dictionary. That, uh, that you can have access to. And then if you're going to, like in, a lot of times in my blogs, I will actually, I need a one outbound link and I'll go to another website. This is one of my favorite websites if I'm just going to explain what a word is, because this is a very credible website and it helps, and it's going to help you with your SEO, not only with the outbound link, but the outbound link is going to a credible website. Now, the, to, the, there are two other things that you need to be aware of. Uh, for you are are, are 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 doing links on your website. As an example, I'm going to go ahead and go back to my WordPress website where well, I logged out. Is whenever you have a page at your uh, or even a blog on your website and you, and you're uh, uh, working with it, let's just go ahead and, and look at this one, the author page. I'm going to go ahead and uh, edit with uh, Elementor. Now, whenever you are, have a link on your website and, and it's going somewhere else, especially if it's going to another website outside of your own, it's not it's, so it's an outbound link. One of the things that you're going to be given the choice to do is, is, is one of these things. So I'm going to click on this button here, and here is the link of where it's going. This is the link where it's going to. Now, this is a WordPress. You don't have to worry about how do you see this. This is a WordPress size setup. But under the settings and most websites, there, there's going to be this thing. It says uh, add uh, no follow. So, with, uh, with, so, so basically, you have two types of things. You have what's called a no follow. And also, what is uh, what I call as a um, uh, a do follow. No follow basically means that whenever uh, Google is crawling this website and it sees this this link on my on my website, and, I, and it says, and I had this on add no follow clicked, it's not going to follow that web. It's not going to go to the next location. Do follow, which means it is unclicked, which means that it does go to that location. So if if it sees that as a as a no follows, so it's basically just seeing that it is a link, but it's not going anywhere. So in my, in my opinion, your default should always be do follow. And also, this is good because whenever you're on somebody else's website and they're referring to your website, you did, that's how you want to make sure that they're, they actually are helping with your SEO is having that do follow. So I would say don't worry about ever using the no follow, regardless of what kind of uh, website that you uh, are, are creating. Now, now we're going to go into the ways to increase your SEO besides those stuff that we just talked about.
Now, for those of you that that are kind of new to SEO, uh, SEO essentially just stands for search engine optimization. So if you're going to something like uh, like uh, Google or Yahoo or Bing, you're going to be um, uh, that those are all, uh, are all known as search engines, and then you want to optimize your uh, your your presence on there. So one way that you can do this, and what I often do is I would say go ahead and write a blog on your personal website or wherever that you're writing your blog. I'm going to hit this as a I'm just going to exit out and not save. Now, so, so right now I'm going to go to our, our posts. And this is the post that I, uh, actually, let's talk about this one here. Uh, the power to the power of backlinks uh, to your website. So this is a, a blog that I wrote in preparation for this course today. And I'm going to go and open up with uh, Elementor. Oh, actually, no, it's going to be with Classic Editor. And one of the things, whenever you're writing a blog, especially if it's on your website, now I'm, not, I'm not talking about when that's, that's on Blogger or some other uh, website, is that you want to have at least one uh, external link that means going to another website, and also one that's called as an internal link. Now, you, whenever you are writing your blog, you will see, like for example, here we're going to talk about these in a moment. There, these are five outbound, yeah, five outbound links going to five other websites. Um, now I'm going to look for the one link that's staying on my website. Uh, so this one here, uh, if I were to click on it, it's going to optimalformatescaling.org forward uh, slash dot 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 forward slash Yoast SEO. So this, this is my internal link. What this does is whenever a Google search engine is coming out to look at you and looking at your website and they see this internal link, they will see that. Uh, I, I can. Uh, I, I, I definitely can. Um, okay, um, so you, you definitely want, whenever the search engines are actually searching your website, um, and they see this internal link, that now they're seeing that your stuff is, is cross-connected, which is which is ideal as from a uh, from an SEO or from a a, a search engine um, uh, perspective. Now, with the outbound links going to credible websites, that shows that you're you're also referencing those other um, those other uh, locations. Now, the thing is. Whenever you write your blog and, and it's done, and by the way, this blog was mainly written by ChatGPT. And then I just went in there and made change. So you don't have to go and write all of these blogs all the time. You can actually start using uh, things like ChatGPT. Just make sure that you are make, uh, updating the content uh, from that search result. Now, what I normally do uh, when I do this is that I'll, I'll write this blog. I may or may not post it, depending on which websites I'm going to be sharing it on. There are other websites that you can, that you can be using and uh, for example, one of the things I like to do is, is do a LinkedIn newsletter. So what I end up doing, and this is what I've been doing for, uh, for a little while now, is I'll go and write my blog on my website with the outbound link, well, at least with, one, with the one outbound link, one or more, and one or more uh, internal links. And then once I publish this post, is I'll then go to LinkedIn. and. And this is actually fairly simple to do. So I'm going to go to my profile. And if you scroll down here, um, I have my own newsletter. Now, you can e very easily uh, create a newsletter. It, it doesn't uh, take very much time to do this. Uh, so I was, you know, go ahead and cre create your newsletter. As you can see, at the time of this recording, I got 268 subscribers. So in this particular case, what I could do is I could go here and hit Control A and Control C for choose all and, and copy. And then I can go inside my newsletter and I can create a new edition. So you will see going by the, uh, going by this blog, which was called uh, The Power of Backlinks to Your Website. Which was uh, which was this blog right here? If I click on the blog and I go inside, you will see it starts off as a small business owner, comma you uh, you understand the importance of online visibility. If I go back to the blog, 
as a small business owner, comma, you understand the importance of online business. So, it, so it was just basically copy pasted over into the, my LinkedIn newsletter. The only thing that you have to do that's different, depending on how you set up your website, is if you want to have this section below the, the conclusion, which is about the author. Normally, I just have this on a, uh, in another Word file because it's going to be the same uh, uh, each and every time. And then I throw in some hashtags. Now, with the with the hashtags on something like LinkedIn, which is that because the, the newsletter is different than a post. A post is something that's going to keep uh, scrolling down and down and down. When somebody makes a post within a couple of hours, it's going to be uh, you will never see it again. That's how Facebook and LinkedIn work. However, with a newsletter, that that is more stagnant, and this is one of the reasons I do this right here is to increase the SEO. When I'm doing the the actual post itself, I I, I do put in uh, hashtags of you know uh, popular things that I had to do with uh what this what this article was about, and then I use custom ones as well. I use like, I use my uh, first name, middle initial, last name, and this here is at Kevin Dunlap, which is my Twitter handle, and then of course we've got Optimal Performance Academy. I, I hashtag that as well because I'm trying to build that as as part of the uh, the hashtag of the universe. Okay, so how do you do on LinkedIn? So let me go back. So if you're going to create a newsletter uh, for the very first time, you would just scroll down to right before you do a post where it says featured and hit plus, and then you can go up here and add a newsletter. So here, so no, uh, this is this is where you will start uh, putting in the, uh, your content, and then this is where you start building it. Uh, it's right here, and once you have it built, then I, I would actually suggest leaving it as your uh, as one of your featured items. So I can go over here and where it says plus. And you will see that I have uh, only three items in, in my uh, in my featured items. If I hit a fourth one, you will see a little arrow so you can go scroll through. If you don't have these locked, anytime you post something on LinkedIn, it will be it, it will be automatically done as a featured. This is uh, this is actually posted under my personal. I do have a business account uh, or business page as well, and the reason I have the business page is so I can create uh, LinkedIn events. However, I believe you don't need a. Uh, I don't believe you need a, a a a LinkedIn business page to create your newsletter. All of mine is done on is done on my personal page. Actually, I think I'm, I'm, I may be wrong. You may have to have one because I did accidentally unsubscribe for myself from my own newsletter. Hmm, that'd be weird. But. Um, Yes, I'll, I'll, I'll go in a, uh, in a little bit, a moment. Um, let me go here. So, uh, so, so right now, I, I, I I'm right now I'm in LinkedIn.com, uh, I n forward slash Kevin A Dunlap. If I click on the newsletter itself, I can start creating that new edition by by, by myself. Now. Whenever you are, uh, whenever you're creating the, this uh, this LinkedIn uh, newsletter article, is that uh, this article now has those same two links that were that you had uh, on your website. Now those links, you have one that's now going to be an inbound link. That's why it's so important to have that one in there because this is going to help you again with your SEO because that's going to be a backlink going to your website and the outbound links are fine. That's, that's perfectly fine. You don't have to worry about those, but that inbound link is the one that becomes important. Okay. Now, if you're going to do, if you want to go off of LinkedIn, if you don't want to use LinkedIn, then there's some other places that you can go. And these are other places that you can actually uh, do your new, uh, uh, actually share your, your articles or, or your posts. When other places you want to go now, you do not want to post on multiple different websites the same the same information because that will actually hurt you. However, if you've done this once, if you create an account uh, with any of these uh, these uh, companies that I'm about to sh share with you, and these are all going to be free accounts that you can do, um, is that I would say make sure that you're you're staying with just that one. So one of the one of the other ones that you can go to is within as known as uh, eZine articles. Their website is www.ezinearticles.com. 
So if I were to copy that link, copy hyperlink, go up here and go control V. And the, you can create a free account here and, and then make, make it sure that any post that you're putting on there, the, the content needs to be relevant. However, let's say, let's say from your blog, it, has, it needs to be relevant and it needs to have at least one link going to your website, somewhere on your website. If uh, another article type of site that you may also want to check out is known as Go Articles. So I'm going to go on there, uh, right mouse click, copy hyperlink, open up a new tab, control V. Oh, Go Articles, I guess, got, um, I guess they merged with uh, Ezon Articles. Uh, so I guess that one doesn't exist anymore. That was existing like two weeks ago. Uh, another one is Article This. Copy paste that one. Control V. Now and here that you can you can um, create or submit an article there as well. Another uh, another article submission site is known as GitHub. And let's copy that one. Now, I'm not going to go into how to create accounts on any of these. You can do your own research as to which one that you are uh, more identified with, and then just start uh, just start posting those articles. Um, and again, do not post the, an article on GitHub, also on Ezine, and then going to do it again on Article Biz because they will they will see that it already exists because they will just they will see that the the verbiage is exactly the same, and then you there's a good chance your account could uh, could get flagged. I know when I started doing articles like this back in the early 2000s, um, I was posting it on Ezine and Go articles, and then all of a sudden, after about the exact same article, within like a two or three months, my uh, my Go articles account got banned. The, which is I, so I do wonder if I'm if I'm banned from uh, Ezine as well. And now that they merged, uh, another place that you can go is called Hera. and this stands for Help a Reporter uh, Out. Essentially, I'm going to check my email. I did not prepare for uh, for uh, talking about this particular site here. Um, is that on 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 uh, on Hero? You you once you once you subscribe to them, you, you're going to get an email three times a day. You can get one in the morning. You'll get another one in the afternoon, and you get, you'll get one in the evening. So you get three emails a day, and essentially each email is going to be a reporter, essentially in, in different uh, kind of criteria. And it's usually about fifty or forty or fifty different criteria for each of those emails, asking some, somebody a, a question about something that they know. Now you can you can answer that question, and you know basically it's going to be like a blog article as well. And at the end of that, uh, if that reporter uses your article, they will credit you with that article with whatever links that you have that are going to your website, or if there are no links going to your website, but then they, they will they will credit you and uh, as the owner of this company, and therefore now you'll get that link to your your homepage. Now I've I've done a few articles uh, or I've submitted a few articles through Harrow. I don't believe any of mine were accepted. So just be aware that uh, I would say don't get too carried away unless you really like to uh, write content. So th those are some uh, a, a great places for you to uh, uh, build that credibility. Another thing that you can do, and I was talking with uh, James about this earlier, is also you also want to be on podcasts. 
you want to be on as many podcasts that are that is in your field as much as possible because normally what the podcast host is going to do is that uh you no know, because one of the things that they're going to uh, ask you is like who are you what is your name of your company how can they how can they get uh, get a hold of you uh one of the things that that podcast host is going to do is they're going to give you some credit and that's one of the reasons that you're wanting to be on that podcast and number one it gives you it gets you exposure number one and then number two that uh that podcast is not going to be linking you know talking about your specific specific show is going to link you uh, uh, back to your website, as well as whatever platforms that they may be on, like uh, it could be on Spotify or any of those other podcast platforms. So you'll get a lot more SEO uh, activity uh, coming to your website. Now, there are about essentially three major pl platforms that I'm aware of where you can go and check to be a, uh, a podcast guest. And that's not the right one. Uh, where you're going to be a podcast guest. So the Probably the one that I'm liking the most uh, it's kind of a weird name. It's called uh, www.matchmaker.fm. So with matchmaker.fm, that is a, a free site and paid site if you want to if you want uh, more services, uh, where you can actually uh, submit your. Uh, let me go there so, or submit uh, your profile on Matchmaker. So I just started find, started working with them maybe about a month ago, and I, I'll go ahead and, and log in. And what the, what this does is this is uh, you can create a free account if you are a guest or you know, find a guest that's for the podcast host, or if you want to find a show that's where you are the guest. So you, you, uh, either the host or the guest can be on this platform. You can create a free account. Um, I know as far as the guest goes. Yes, I was going to say that one, James. Um, the, as far as being a guest goes, if you have the free account, you're limited to 10 emails per month. So just be aware, uh, just be aware of that. And if you're trying to be on somebody's show, make sure that you leave your personal contact information so that you're not uh, spending two credits, but this is called that, um, because of, uh, uh, for one show. So you want to make sure that you uh, that you use that one. As as James just said, podcast guest is another great uh, location. And uh, you can lo log in with Facebook or remember log in. Now, this is also a free account as well as also where you can be a uh, a paid account with uh, with uh, additional features. And if, I'll put this in the email, podcast guest. And a third one that I like is one that's called a radio guest list. So if I go there, copy that hyperlink. And this one will send you a, an email as well, um, probably once every two or three days. Um, and they will have, uh, usually they'll have two uh, shows that are looking for guests. Now on, on the radio guest list and possibly also on the, uh, on the uh, podcast guests, is to uh, sometimes they do charge to be on their show. Now, and that's, that's going to be up to you if you want to pay that chart or pay that free. I would say probably two thirds of them are going to be free uh, as a you know as a guest because the podcast host you know the, the, uh, the, they're looking you know uh, for guests and, and, and to be a good incentive for you to be on their show. Uh, they, they, they are free. However, there are some podcasts that do charge. These may be ones that are uh, actually a larger one or larger shows that's had maybe tens of thousands of followers and they have a whole team that's um that's actually doing the um uh, the editing of the show and and putting it all together so sometimes they will charge and then the amount that they charge if, they, if it's above if it's not free can vary it can be from just a few dollars like 10 five ten bucks to 155 dollars so it is up to you if you want to do this now when you get the email from the radio guest list as an example um, they they would they would give the name of the show and then they would talk about who are they looking for and if that fits you I would say scroll to the very bottom of that of that email or of that uh, that that section of that email and see if they charge because the last thing I want you to do is to go in there you look at the show you look at uh, it would be perfect for the show you start writing an email of uh, uh, to the contact person because that that would be part of the uh, part of the email and then you find out oh this is going to be seventy nine dollars like eh, that's for you to decide if you want to do. Uh, pay that fee or not so these are three different uh great platforms uh, that you can be on
Now, um, and I would say James would probably will, will, will say that because he's a podcast uh, host himself, is that uh, whenever they, again, whenever they are going to be on the show, they, your contact information will be on their uh, on their website or, or or connected with their show, which if they're on multiple platforms like iTunes and uh, Spotify, all those other services, that's a, that's a lot of more exposure uh, for you. Now, the last thing is I want to talk about to help, uh, help you with your business or the next thing is, is that you can also create what's called a, what used to be called a Google My Business. That actually has been, that name has been changed to Google Business Page. Now with Google My Business, that's how you're going to be, uh, it's just, that's how people are gonna find your business online. Now, I would I would assume most of you- Excuse uh, me, one second. Could yes. I interrupt briefly? Yeah, yes, my business is now called Google Business Profile. Proofing. Thank you. I do end it with a P. Thank you. So a lot of people are still sticking with GMB, uh, but yes, it has been changed to uh, Google Business Profile. Thank you, Joe, for that update. Um, so essentially, if you've ever uh, looked, uh, Googled a business before, it will give you their uh, their locations, their hours of operation, things like that. That's all from your Google uh, business profile. Now, let's go ahead and I'm just going to do a Google search for this. Now, this is that's Yelp there. We'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, so you can do you can go to uh, Google uh, www.google.com forward slash business and this is where you can actually start creating your account. Now this is going to that would this that's going to be a, a completely another training to know how to do that. You're going to attend that training because this will take probably a good hour hour and a half to go through all the features on this. But if you've got an online business, it doesn't matter if you have a, a storefront or not. You should have a Google Business Profile page. As an example, I'm a business coach myself. I work from my home and I, I do have a Google business profile. So if I were to go to Google as an example and type in Optimal uh, Performance Academy, you will see my, my profile appears over here, over here on the right-hand side. So th th this is the, this is my business page. This will, this will uh, again, help helps you with your SEO because you will have links to your website. You're gonna, uh, that's which is part of your, uh, a, a part of your profile. You can be promoting some of your products or services that you're doing. And this is another great way for people to actually um, learn more about you as well as to, again, increase your SEO because you're now, you're now on Google's platform uh, with your business. So I would strongly suggest, regardless if you've got a storefront or not, then go ahead and do this. I, I live in Raleigh, North Carolina. I'm just renting an, an apartment right now because I just moved here. Um, is that it's just that's the uh, that's the address of the property and that's the uh, the, the the picture of the building uh, that I'm in, as well as you know you can change photos and hours and stuff like that. Another thing you may also want to look at is uh, I'll type it in the in the word file for, first is have a Yelp page. So you can uh, create a free Yelp account um, with your business. They're, they do have a paid uh, stuff as well. Uh, they have uh, many different things, uh, things that you can do with, uh, with your page. And let's just say, uh, I've not done this, so I don't, I don't need that up here. I used to have an account. And okay. I just turned it on, honey. Okay, so I, I I may I may not have my business on here anymore, but this is a this is another platform where you can actually be putting your business, especially if you're going to be a storefront type of business. Um, let me go. There, another place that you also want to create a business profiles. If you can, if you're if you're part of a, a, a the Better Business Bureau, and that's up to you if you want to join your your Better Business Bureau. Back when I was in real estate, I was part of the Las Vegas Better Business Bureau for a little while. 
Um, you have to have a, uh, for, for the Yelp page, Jason, you do have to have a physical address. But again, if you're a home-based business, you'll be using your home address. Your home address. Yes, and, yeah, and that's and that's one of the things about, uh, I just saw your third statement, Jason. Um, yes, if you're using your home address, even on the Google My Business or Google Business page, um, is that you're going to, um, you are using your home address so people can uh, come to your location. Now, if you ha happen to have a mailbox place where you're hanging your, your business license, you can always use that as your uh, as your uh, business location as well. And BBB does, char does charge. Uh, for you to uh, for you to be part of their uh, the, the the organization, so so does the Chamber of Commerce. So these are other places that you can have profiles online, where you know being a member that your 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 name will appear, your business name will appear, as well as uh, links to your website. Now again, the, the, I, I want to reiterate that you do want to go go back to your website and make sure that you fix all uh, of your links. Now, I'm going to show you a mistake that I did um, uh, a little while ago, and it took me several hours to go, go and get it fixed. And I'm going to go back to my curriculum. So when, when I was first uh, putting together my courses, and let's just pick uh, any of my courses, is that I had my courses, um, hit the learn more. I have my courses all under uh, on uh, all in a, in a different plat or all in a different locations, and then I decided to you know what as far as the uh, the design on my WordPress website, I wanted to keep all my courses together under a, a mother a tag or what you want to call it called online classes. When I did that, all of my links to go to my free information pages were now incorrect. So um, and make sure that if you do change your hierarchy in your uh, in your WordPress uh, domains, that you are all aware that that is going to cause all your links to go bad. And you have to go there and, and manually fix them. For those who don't know what I'm talking about, it basically what, what I did was I went to let me go to pages. Is under my online courses, which is on page two. Um, is I put all of my courses as as subcategories of this online classes, and that broke all of the all of my previous links going here. So I had to go to all the different websites and all the backlink uh, places and and make those updates. So before you before you actually give you know, before you start doing this, make sure that you have the link is going to be what you're going to be keeping it, especially if you're going to be posting it uh, or giving to somebody that has a link to your website that is actually going to be incorrect and you have no control over. Now, Mohammed just said um, his new website's fun, uh, furnacecleaning.us. Uh, is that plumbers or plumbers.com? And then showtimedogfood.com. Oh, he, he's okay. You were asking for it. So uh, the plumbers.com. Okay, so make sure that you uh, do that. Now, also, whenever you are, um, another way to help with your backlinks is, is to start shooting videos. And make sure that, and then put, uh, make sure that you, when you're you're loading them to YouTube, that you have uh, backlinks to your website. Okay. So in the past, when I was uh, when I was a real estate uh, uh, agent, I would shoot the videos uh, for YouTube, and then I, I always I put it on YouTube, and then I had a reference going back to not only to my website, my the, the, my main homepage, but also to the flyer for that YouTube. So as an example, what I'm doing now is, is that for each and every course that I create, if I go here and, and scroll down a little bit, I have a YouTube video that's 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 on YouTube that's kind of I go back to my website. So again, to start using the, the keywords in my video and the backlink to so I start ranking on uh, as far as SEO is concerned. And then uh, the last thing you want to do is to and I will share this with you all as well is something, and I'm not too familiar exactly what this does, but if you go and, and you do create a blog, especially if you're gonna, if you have access to this, is that the, uh, is to actually do what is known as, you want to do what is known as ping, pinging. 
Now, pinging uh, is essentially just when you create a, a blog that is going to actually go out and be, and, be, and these other uh, places are going to um, get, see that link and it's going to go on to other uh, sites to let the, basically the world know that your, that your blog was just published. So let me remember how to get there. So if you're on WordPress, and, and if you're not on WordPress, you will have to definitely uh, uh, try to find out how you do it on blogger.com or whichever ones you have. Um, is to, I forget where it is. It must be under, is it there under appearance or settings? Let me see here. Um, okay. So I'm going under settings and then going under media. And then at the very bottom, no, it's not there. So I've only done this once. And once you do it once and you never go back, here we go. It's under settings and writing. So let me go ahead and control, control A, control C. And these are all the pinging sites that you would like to go and put your, uh, your stuff on. So uh, on, uh, on all seven of these different sites. Now, if you have a WordPress site, you're just putting it in uh, the update services and then to, you hit save changes and you will never have to worry about this ever again. If you're on another kind of website, you may not have access to this. Uh, or uh, I believe you may be able to go to these different pinging sites and then if you write an article, say like uh, uh, eZine articles, you can probably share it on here so that eZine article is being shared, which has those links to go into your website. So again, this is all with, uh, with the whole uh, purpose of, of building that SEO to your site. And uh, then this is about it um, as far as the SEO is concerned. I know it probably went through a lot of information. I usually do. Um, any questions so far? And you can unmute yourself at any time to ask any kind of questions. Or if I need to go over anything else um, uh, more clearly. And, and thank you, Jason, for pointing out some of the things I needed to. Going back to the chat. So I, I, I'm going back over the site. I'm going to the okay, I was just seeing new messages. Now, now, now I can save this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and save this uh, file uh, and talk and say Control A and call it um, uh, just Tuesday. And I'm going to go and put this as a shared file in the chat. Okay, so I just put the word file in, in the chat box. So for those of you that were asking about the, ha having access to everything that I wrote down there, you, you now have the, the file and you can go ahead and, and save that. And there we go, that back over. And, and yes, it was my, my pleasure. Now, I, I, again, if you felt like you got some good information uh, from this event, I, I, I do ask, um, let me go, where do I need to go here? Um, the, the, since you guys are, all, are, are, are already most likely part of the meetup group, you're, you're either one of the 127 people uh, that are on this. Uh, we have other events coming up here in the near future. Our next one is going to be talking about building a business credit. If you want to be uh, notified by, um, you know, by, by email, just remember you can go to 
Oops, where'd it go? Go to this event here. So again, a reminder for all of our future uh, Tuesday events, just go to our website, the Optimal Performance Academy, uh, org. Org there for slash uh, Tuesday. And, and then you will be notified uh, of, the, of our upcoming events. And again, for those of you that did uh, attend this call, go ahead and also go to uh, uh, HTTPS four slash um, or colon four slash four slash enlistmeet.io, Optimal Performance Academy dot uh, or four slash discovery. I'll put that in the chat as well. There you go. I'm going to click on it and make sure that it does work. Let me see here. It does. It's just going to keep. That is my platform for my calendar. So yes, you you will see my calendars. Um, I do do it from nine o'clock to six o'clock, uh, Monday through Friday. And as you can see, times do vary depending on um, you know, what's going on with myself. So anyway, so that link does work. And that is all that I have. And I want to say for those of you that are actually watching this on the Facebook Live, thank you for joining us today. And I will hope to see you guys next time. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording. So let me hit the escape.